record. All right, so it's Good Friday, and we're sitting down with Veronica again. Um, this would have happened yesterday, except for I totally forgot that we agreed last time that we would meet on, uh, on Thursday. Then I ended up in the back country up in Squamish, and I came back to multiple texts from Veronica and then felt like an asshole for the entire rest of the day. No, I was a needy chick. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we are here now on Good Friday and we are going to chat everything to do with um, the transition, you know, like what's going on, how this plant-based vegan diet is treating my body and kind of maybe break it down and analyze it a little bit for everybody. So uh, welcome uh, for the second, actually this is the third run into this now because we had to exit the last meeting and rejoin this one. So welcome. Okay, Blake, uh, I'm, I'm really excited because I listened to your experience on your podcast. And today is a day 10. Yep. And you had a quiet transition between from carnivore diet to plant-based diet. Yep. And can you just walk me through, especially I was very interesting when I listened to your podcast day three. Mm-hmm. And you're all kinds of, you have the feeling. So just, uh, just through me, I want to hear. Yeah, you know, I, I guess kind of like some of like the, the major things for me, you know, like, like through this last because, you know, like call it kind of like a week, you know, like, you know, like it's technically this is like the morning of the 10th day, um, you know, but I kind of got about like, like nine solid days in on this now nine and a half days. Um, you know, and like some of the things I like I noticed, like initially, and I was kind of hoping that they would have subsided, subsided by now, but they haven't is just, um, for one, like, like the initial weight gain, like gaining 10 pounds, like that has now kind of leveled off um, at, a, at about like five, six pounds of like actual weight gain. And, you know, like I realized a lot of this is now like water retention, you know, from having all the extra carbohydrates in the body, um, you know, and this kind of stuff. Um, the one thing that I've really noticed too, when it comes down to like, like tracking the food and, you know, kind of like understanding this is you know, like the amount of food that I'm eating is actually substantially higher, I feel, than, you know, like when I was on the carnivore diet, like I'm actually consuming more raw material, Um, you know, and like where this is kind of troublesome to me is not only like the quantity um, has gone up, you know, like in the in the amount of food that I'm eating. But when I look at my my macronutrients, like my carbohydrates are, you know, about 200 to 250 grams a day, you know, my fats are about 250 to 300 grams a day, which is kind of like exactly what it was on the carnivore diet, except for instead of it being carbohydrates, it was protein, you know, being about that 200 to 250. And my protein right now is about 60 or 70 grams a day, you know, so like, it's kind of like almost like role reversal between carbohydrates and protein. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and when I look at this, you know, like what what's hard for me is with that is, if I'm already eating so much food, I'm kind of having a hard time eating the food that I'm eating right now. But my protein is kind of around like 60, 70 grams of all this stuff that I'm eating and my fats and my carbohydrates are so high. You know, and even though I'm trying to eat, you know, things like, you know, like last night I had lettuce wrap, uh, uh, vegan tacos that like black beans, quinoa, um, wild rice, you know, things like that. But like, again, it's like, like the quantity that I was eating, like I had, like the big strips of romaine lettuce that are about this long, you know, I had an avocado spread underneath that. Then I layered the, some of like the, um, the uh, wild rice, then a little bit of the quinoa, then some corn, some black beans, um, and some hot uh, salsa on that. And I, I think I had probably, yeah, like six or seven of them total. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I, that's like what I had for several, like that's a, a fairly substantial amount of food. Like I was stuffed after that. But again, like my protein levels like are so low, you know, and I find like, like that's hard. Like, although I cognitively feel way better, like my mind Uh is way better. I'm way more sharp, um, you know, but on the flip side of that is now my stomach feels super bloated. You know, I'm really full, you know, like I know there's kind of like a limitation of like, you know, like how long I could be on a diet where my protein intake is so low um, because right now it just so happens with this COVID-19 thing is that you know like my demand for protein on my body is probably a little bit lower than what it normally is because I'm not I'm still active but I'm not as active 
I'm, you know, I'm not playing squash four days a week. You know, I'm, I'm outside running more. Um, I'm lifting weights, you know, like heavy weights, you know, probably two less days a week because the weights I have access to right now just aren't that heavy. Uh -huh. I'm not doing a lot of compounding lifts, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, but if I was living my regular everyday life and my protein levels being so low, um, like that would be a concern for me because of the amount of volume of food that I have to eat to be able to try to get those protein stores up. Uh -huh. Um, I've noticed like a substantial amount of like gas, whether that be like burping or tooting, like, which I never experienced like at all when I was on the, on the carnivore diet, which I actually thought it would be the flip side of that. Because as we know, in like the bodybuilding industry for years, everybody always said like the protein parts or whatever, right? Like, yeah. protein parts, yeah. which I realize now that's a complete myth. Like it, it is an absolute myth because like for the entire month I was on the carnivore diet, I mm -hmm. had no no GI distress at all, you know, uh -huh. you know like no, no burping, no tuning, no nothing. Uh -huh. um, you know, and, and another thing that I really noticed too is because the volume of my food is so high to mm -hmm. try to be able to get like, you know, my protein stores up, even though I'm trying to seek out foods that are higher in protein, uh -huh. um, that like my actual like stool concentration has gone up too, which to me, like, you know, if I, if it, there's more quantity in my stool, then obviously like my body's processing more there's more waste product there's more there's more chance and there's more room for potential inflammation there because my body's just doing more work like it there's just more work happening in my body because you know again like if the concentration of my stool has gone up the the only logical conclusion that anybody could draw there is that there like my body has to do more work because there's more byproduct there's more stuff going through my system so that there'd be that um i noticed that my blood pressure has it's come down now. My blood pressure spiked, uh -huh. um, and now it's starting to come down. But consistently, almost every single day when I was on the carnivore diet, my blood pressure was in an optimal range. And now I would say that you know my my blood pressure right now is in a suboptimal range um, consistently. Uh, my biological age has gone up. Like it's come down now to about like, you know, 39 to 41 kind of seems uh -huh. to be like my average has kind of got down out of the high 40s. Uh -huh. um, but again, when I was on the carnivore diet, my kind of static mean age on the carnivore diet would be between 28 and 30. So I've kind of gained eight to 10 biological years in that as well. Um, and the one thing that I've really noticed too, which is interesting because my blood pressure monitor, um, I like I have an extremely good one by by cardio. Uh, they have excellent machines and it tests for and monitors for irregular heartbeat too. Uh -huh. I've noticed and anybody who's like looked at those stats like like each morning is that um, right under like right above like the graph, the colored graph, it'll say irregular heartbeat detected. Um, what's concerning to me is if you look in the literature from cardio that you know, if you have an irregular heartbeat um, that's monitored for more than five consecutive days, you should go see your healthcare professional. While I'm on like, of the last seven days, I think I've had an irregular heartbeat five out of those last seven days. You know, it hasn't been five consecutive days. Uh -huh. But again, like there would be the odd day that, you know, like that would happen when I was on the, the carnivore diet, but it's probably maybe like one out of every 10 days which the margin for error there could be anything, right? Like, like who knows what that could be because it was, it was pretty irregular. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing I've noticed now since I made the switch is that like it is happening far more than not that I'm getting this irregular heartbeat detection, um, which that like, again, too, is also concerning to me because like, like these are all things where I'm kind of going in like the opposite direction. So it seems like, when I was on the carnivore diet, what happened was is that um, I wasn't cognitively or mentally strong or emotionally strong, uh -huh. but I had physical capability. Now, what's happening now is it seems like that, you know, I'm cognitively way stronger, but internally, I'm going downhill. So like, I see the pros and cons of both. Like, you know, like when I was on the carnivore diet, you know, like, again, I wasn't mentally, or emotionally strong, which eliminated kind of my fifth gear, my high performance gear, you know, but internally I felt fantastic. I mm -hmm. felt amazing, you know, which like, and I see the effects of this in the data, you know, because what that kind of correlates to is the carnivore diet is really supposed to mimic fasting. 
And a lot of this stuff, a, a lot of the, the data that I was receiving was actually indicating that I was receiving these positive effects like I was fasting. These are all the same things that you would data collect if you were fasting. So I see that truth behind it. You know, now being like on this, this plant-based diet, I'm so happy to have my <laughs> mental strength, my emotional, <laughs> my cognitive strength. But, you know, like all day long, you know, like I feel heavy, I feel bloated, like, you know, like, like it just like, like my stomach doesn't feel as clean. Now, does it, does my stomach feel better than probably what most people's stomachs do? Absolutely. And, and I don't want to compare this to like how your stomach would feel off a McDonald's diet and, and, you know, beer drinking, cigarette smoking, lazy, lethargic lifestyle. I'm not saying I feel like that. I'm just saying that I feel in contrast to the carnivore diet, mm -hmm. heavy and bloated because I know like how clean I felt internally when I was on the carnivore diet. So again, to me, this is more of like a selling case that neither one of these diets is really optimal. It would be the hybrid combination between the two where, you know, you're kind of predominantly plant-based, you know, because of these nutrients that I want to be able to feel cognitively, mentally, and emotionally strong, you know, but to be able to feel good in my stomach, to be able to feel and, you know, be able to, to be able to operate at a high performance range because of the proteins where you, I would need to substitute some of the, the animal products like in my diet. So um, like these are kind of so just some of the things like that I've noticed again, like what what is concerning to me is just the data, you know, like I am doing nothing else. Like I try to wake up in within the first 10 minutes of my morning every single morning you know, I'm on the scale, you know, I've got the blood pressure monitor on, you know, I have like the little finger monitor on for yeah. the biological age, right? And all that kind of stuff, recording this data and this information, like that's never changed. And arguably, I'm probably getting more sleep now than what I was through the carnivore diet. Because on when I started the carnivore diet it was kind of at the beginning of the COVID-19. So a lot of my life hadn't changed yet. And it was only within maybe the last like, you know, seven to 14 days that my, on the cardboard diet that my life really started to change because of COVID-19. But like now, you know, like I went to bed, I think at like 11 o'clock last night and I woke up at, you know, six, six thirty, I think six o'clock, you know, which is irregular for me to get that many hours of sleep is not regular. And that's pretty consistent now, because again, there's not the, like the urgency to get up in, in the morning, you know, like my body's kind of got into this natural routine. I'm not waking up by an alarm clock anymore. So I should be experiencing the positive biological effects from getting the extra sleep. Plus, you know, being on a plant-based diet, which everybody says I should be getting these positive biological effects from that. But yet the data has got worse. Yes. So. Wow. What yeah. are you going through? Because first of all, when you're going through that transition, because your body gets shocked, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to give some time for your body to adjust. Body always, they're very smart, you know, they adjust itself. But the thing is, what I understood, you know what, there is no really perfect diet, right? So I'm looking at your individual person when you say like a kind of a diet, you have so much benefit for, let's say, you know, your digestive system, and then you feel really tight, you know, you don't have that feeling like a little bit sluggish. Right now, you're having bloated, you're pouching, you truly feel like you feel passing gas and so on. Mm -hmm. What I think, first of all, when you on a plant-based diet, doesn't matter if it's a complex carbohydrate or just a, a starch or simple carbohydrate, um, it's every grams you get like a four pounds of water. Yeah. The body holds that water. So of course, you know, right away you gain, your body gets shocked, you know, you're holding a lot of water. So that's a liquid pound. It's not really virtual, your, I don't say it's a fat, or muscle, it's a, it's a liquid pound. So that's like a normal symptom, that's what I see. But the thing is like, uh, when you have those uh, fiber from all those uh, colorful vegetable and all those carbs, um, I'm sure you drink enough water, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so you drink I'm water. Still, I drink a little bit less water now. Like, like I said, when I was on the carnivore diet because I was chronically parched, mm -hmm. you know, I was probably up around like 200 ounces of water a day. Like I would say, if anything, I'm probably about 160, 170 ounces now. And, you know, I'm about 170 pounds, mm -hmm. you know, so like, again, I'm, I'm about an ounce per pound. Um, and that's including, you know, like water intake, like during like activity. 
mm-hmm. and stuff like that too. So, you know, like I, I'm probably a little bit lower than like what I should be, but again, I'm still kind of hedging like the bet that I, I'm probably more hydrated than what the average person is walking around. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and the, and the one thing just so like, like people do know, like I absolutely do agree with you. And, and that's something I alluded to when, when I first started explaining this is that like, I do know that like these carbohydrates are going to act like sponges in my body and I'm going to hold water on tight. Like, I'm not worried about that where most people would be like, Oh, I've gained four or five pounds. I'm worried about this. I'm not worried necessarily that this weight is fat or muscle. Like there's, there's no way in two or three days I'm going to gain 10 pounds to either one of those. I know that the thing is where it's a problem to me because I've never been a vanity guy. Like I I don't really care whether I have a six pack. I care Mm -hmm. if I can perform. So Mm -hmm. if I'm five or 10 pounds heavier than my, like is about 168 pounds is my optimal performance weight. Mm -hmm. So if I'm five or 10 pounds heavier than that, my performance goes down, which then the flip side of that is just as hard for me is that if somebody has gained five or 10 pounds and they're trying to lose weight or if all of a sudden they don't have a six pack anymore because I'm slower, you know, or when you're hiking 20, 30 kilometers an extra uh-huh. 10 pounds on your body, uh-huh. you know, that makes it a big difference by the end of that day, just pulling that much more weight, you know, up and down these mountains. Right. So, you know, like I look at it in situations like, like that, uh-huh. um, but as in like that five or 10 pounds being like, like emotionally hard for me to be able to see because the scale weight has gone up and now I think I'm fat. Like I don't think like that at all, which oh, most people do. Oh, that's great. And another thing what I noticed that um, like you say, uh, what else you told me about it? Like you feel like not comfortable, but yeah. here's the thing. Um, do you know if you can digest well about like those food, like a nightshade vegetable? Mm. This is like a, the, those vegetables, there's a lectin enzyme in it right and or you have uh oxalates you know because those are the enzyme that like very some people uh is almost backfire when you actually eat them so i always tell people like it is important what you eat so people call like you know what you eat that's who you are but yeah. more importantly like what you can digest that's yeah. really who you are so even though those food like i'm sure you had all colorful vegetable like you have a spinach or the greens your broccoli cauliflower i'm sure you had all the peppers and you have zucchini you have like an eggplant all different even fruits as well but those foods even include the grains mm. they're very high in oxalates food yeah. and also they're high in also when you look at the zucchini the cucumber all those things it's a it's a nightshade vegetable so do you know if you can metabolize those enzymes well or no? So it's actually really great that you brought that up. And it's actually kind of funny because as we're walking through this conversation, like I see the two professionals talking about something that they're both knowledgeable about because it almost seems prescriptive. So like when you say <laughs> that, like I say, well, yeah, but what I did was for, like my goal for the first week is the transition. It was uh-huh. only to go back to eating the same fruits and vegetables and foods that I would normally consume before uh-huh. I started the carnivore diet. Uh-huh. Because being on the carnivore diet, I actually didn't change any of the meat sources that I've always ate. Uh-huh. I just only then ate those meat sources. But I've always ate scallops, mussels, clams, oysters, you know, chicken, beef, pork, all these things. I just then only ate that. So like when I got off the carnivore diet, I'm like, okay, well, the things I predominantly eat, like avocados, um, you know, peanut butter, coconut oil, plantain chips, Mm -hmm. uh, roasted pine nut hummus, Mm -hmm. cucumbers, carrots, um, you know, I guess just to like kind of like name a few, right? Like I went back to just kind of reintroducing those things into my diet because Mm I, I, I know exactly how I normally feel eating those things. Mm-hmm. So if I would have went right away a full tailspin into like introducing all of these new foods, just because all of a sudden I switched to a vegan diet, I could see why I might feel like crap because I'm not used to eating any of these things. So like what I did is I just stuck with what I know and what my body knows because I, I can only have reasonable data to be able to communicate to people knowing that, okay, well, I made a change, yes, but this change is something that my body, my mind kind of know, you know, but like now my goal is for the next 20 days 
is to, okay, really expand there. Okay, well, what am I going to do? Because yes, I do regularly eat things like cauliflower and zucchini and like all these things. Like my body knows that. Well, what else can I have? Like, what are the other things? You know, like I don't predominantly eat a lot of quinoa. That's why last night was the first time I had a little bit of quinoa, you know, in with my meal, mm-hmm. you know, and had that quinoa with, you know, with rice, with beans, because we know that the, the combination between those things you know, the amino acid profiles go up. We have a lot more complete protein strands instead of like incomplete strands or like lower on the, you know, the amino acid profile levels, Mm -hmm. you know, to actually start making these like better quality proteins, you know, but again, I've always ate a lot of hummus. So I've always had like a lot of chickpeas. I've always ate a lot of like, you know, Indian food. So there's been like the spinach, there's been the chickpeas, like Mm -hmm. there's been the white basmati rice. There's like these things. I've just kind of flipped all those things back into my diet. Now the diversity is going to start to come in. So Mm -hmm. like, it'll be interesting to see like, okay, well, what happens from there? Because like, I don't actually eat a whole lot of spinach regularly or like lettuce regularly or any of those kind of things. They're in my diet, but they would come in my diet by way of being in something, Mm -hmm. but not as in like being raw or in an abundance and stuff like, you know, like, um, because like I love Pollock paneer, you know, like it's basically like um, spinach and cheese Indian dish. Now I just don't eat the paneer. Like I don't eat the mm-hmm. cheese. I just eat the spinach because I want the spinach and all that kind of stuff. So, but like now I'm actually just going to try to incorporate more actual like raw spinach and like these different things like into my diet because I know like I, I want the actual diet of like, okay, well, if I'm going to be a good vegan, I need an abundance of variety. So I need to incorporate all these things the same way I choose to get 15 different meat sources. Mm-hmm. I want to choose to be able to use the abundance of all of the produce to me, you know, like incorporate, you know, like more fruits and all that kind of stuff outside of apples, because I typically love palmello and mm-hmm. granny Smith apples. So those are always kind of like my go-to things for, um, for fruits mm-hmm. and stuff. And I just know that like my body likes them. It's easier for me to digest them. So now I'm going to kind of venture outside of that and just say, okay, well, you know, like what else, you know, am I going to incorporate to be able to kind of see how this is all going to affect my body. And now I'm only really looking at, cause I know my performance is up, but I might be a little bit slower cause I'm heavier, but like my cognitive function is there. My mental and emotional strength is there. I'm really just looking at now, can I make my stomach feel as good as what it felt when I was on the carnivore diet? Because if I can make my stomach feel as good as I did on the carnivore diet, and I can increase my protein levels and drop down my carbohydrate levels well on this, this plant-based diet, Mm -hmm. then to me, like that'll be the best because then I will be completely sold that like a plant-based diet alone, excluding all meat or animal, all animal product sources that that would be optimal. Now, if I can't achieve that, then Mm -hmm. that to me is the selling case why I do need a little bit of animal products like in my diet. But only, only the next 20 days will be able to tell how exactly I'm going to feel, right? Wow, exactly. And if you want to find out, yeah, what really works for you, you know, you can digest uh, uh, properly for the food. The best way to, you really have to know like what you're eating, individual dose, plant-based, uh, either it can be vegetable or fruits, or it can be uh, grains. You have to really dissect it's coming from which beans, it's a kidney beans, it's a pinto beans or a nave. You have to find those things. So you kind of eliminate one, at a time so you know what doesn't work yeah. what works for you so that's number one for the digestive system and the other one that because this is so crazy when you go to the plant-based diet when you try to bring up your protein portion is it goes up same time the fat and carbohydrate together yeah and um yes you know also i can tell you that um the plant-based diet is mm-hmm. one cons really negative side is for me because i'm an athlete as well mm-hmm. uh in order to perform also we don't want to really lose the lean muscle mass right yeah. then you want to have those complete amino acid yeah the complete protein is coming from the animal protein mm-hmm. especially from like those uh, uh, shellfish yeah. and especially from those uh, um like organs especially liver yeah and we don't have that in the plant-based diet it's, uh, and the body can actually um, uh, absorb everything if you have all those from the beans and all the, uh, let's say, uh, spirulina or you can get from other plant-based source of all those protein, right? It's, it's incompleted and is an inactive form. So body have to convert that to actually active. That, that ratio is not really a lot. 
for instance, when you compare with the one whole X, yeah, and then just compare with the bins. So let's say uh, they study about it. The eggs are about like a body can absorb about like a ninety percent the yeah. protein amino acid, but the beans is like it's less than about like a ten percent if you're good. So even though it's really healthy, nutritious food that comes with when we break down the macro, it's very hard to take those protein amino acid and then you can actually use that in the body. So that's downside of it. That's why I know before you start all this human experiments, yeah. you did like, you know, about 20% good like a protein source, animal protein, and you did about like 80% you had like a plant-based the yeah. food, right? That's really good because uh, if you're going to go long term, thank God you do this one 30 days. If you go like a several months and longer, the plant-based diet, you know, you eliminate all those animal protein source. What's going to happen? Um, it's actually study show that um, it can decrease your sex hormone, which is special for testosterone, you know, men's hormone. And for female, it's going to be estrogen. Yeah. So um, that's why it is important to have a little bit of everything. That's always I tell people, but you're showing the people what works for you. And also another thing that your heart rate, irregular heartbeat, this is a pandemic. Mm. Either you say, you know, Veronica, I'm fine with it, you know, but still unconsciously, you're stressed. This is something that, you know, you don't get stressed. Everything is normal because already your life is a little bit changed. Mm. right so yeah. therefore when the body is like that unconsciously your body uh, produces those uh, cortisol stress hormone yeah. when your body is uh, start to have an you know, access of cortisol stress hormone the number one is important thing is it brings the inflammation up and then your heart rate goes up make sense mm. so usually people is a stress body type what I do like uh, you have to have some animal protein that helps Really, it's brings and, up, like, and you know, and just to kind of like, you know, it would switch because like I, I agree with like the cortisol and you know, and obviously like cortisol levels in everybody's life are, are probably extremely high right now. Like, you know, because we're globally going through this together, and obviously when we're also walking around and feeling this this negativity of other people and the stress of other people, our cortisol levels are going to go up because of that too. So not only because how we perceive it, but also by the energy that we're getting off other people, right? You no, know, but like. My, my thing too, to kind of go back to you being on this plant-based diet and having no animal protein, I've been pretty candid by saying this and, and it's not getting better if anything, it's getting worse, is that like knowing what absolute satiation feels like being on the carnivore diet and now going to never being satiated at all. And I realized something that I think is absolutely vital information for, for people to know is satiation has nothing to do with taste and i think a lot of people think satiation feels like that this tastes good i want something that tastes good because we have these cravings for things that equate to taste but now knowing that satiation actually is just an a real feeling like a light switch where it's just like you're done that's it you don't think about but like now you know like I am chronically in the cupboard. I'm chronically in the fridge. I'm consuming a massive amount of calories past the point of being full mm -hmm. because I, I, I can't not. I, I'm searching. I realize my body's like, I need something else. It's searching for that protein. And it's kind of like my mind sees the dark chocolate and it's like, okay, well, it's 85% dark chocolate. Who cares? Have a couple squares. There's like two grams of sugar in half of this thing that's like this big like not a big deal you know like you know you want to have some almonds um some cashews and some walnuts they're unsalted they go ahead who cares healthy fats but the thing is because i'm missing this thing and my body's not satiated i'm just bouncing from one thing to another to try to fulfill that mm -hmm. because now like i realize like they're on a on a plant-based diet it would be very hard for somebody to convince me that you can feel absolute satiation without having just to convince yourself that you're, you're satisfied or that you're full because I would have never, unless being on the carnivore diet, actually understood what satiation really is. And talking to people who've done the carnivore diet know what I'm talking about, but people who haven't don't know for the same 
reason that I would have never known. But it's odd. It's like you are just done and you just do not think about it. There's nothing in your mind or your body that says, go get some more of anything, not just meat. Like I could sit there, there like ice cream, donuts, chips, chocolate, nuts, hummus, pickles, cucumber, plantain chips. There can be all these things in front of me. And you look at it and it's like staring at a white wall. Like it means nothing. But now when I eat, I look at all these things and I'm like, what are these things am I going to eat? Well, I'm never going to eat the donuts or the ice cream or anything like that anyway. But I'm like, okay, well, I just finished eating six or seven of these like, you know, vegan taco uh, things, which are incredibly well balanced. Like my body should be satiated theoretically Mm -hmm. off what I just ate. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, I went back and I ate two cups. Well, it was about two and a half cups of mixed cashews and walnuts which the calorie dump at that at 1030 at night is huge. I ate half of one of these 85% dark chocolate bars, which the calorie count is low because it's basically just cocoa powder and stuff. And it was like not a huge amount of calories, but like, I just, I, like, I, I couldn't stop and I could have ate more, uh-huh. but again, I was so full. I couldn't even lay down because I felt like, I <laughs> up. but like, I could, like my, my mind still wasn't like stopped. So I can see why people gain so much weight, mm-hmm. you know, for like, you know, when, when they switch to like, like a plant-based diet, well, that, that is there because like the, it goes up to your body is searching. And I, I think the people who lose a lot of weight, you mm-hmm. know, like I, I look at who those people typically are in the vegan community and they're mm-hmm. typically more vegan athletes, right? You know, like, so like, but the typical person in everyday life is not an athlete. So whenever we compare like athletes and diet, which we are typically always going to do that, the information is distorted. But if you take the average vegan on a vegan diet, they are not underweight. They are typically in our standards of measuring what weight means are going to be in an overweight category. That's just guaranteed, you know, and we just don't have the data with the carnivore diet because there's nobody just regular average Joe that's been on a carnivore diet long enough to be able to take that data and say, well, now we have all these carnivores that are just like on this carnivore diet. The data is starting to come in, mm-hmm. you know, but it's not in comparison to a vegan community. But if you, if you historically look at a lot of like, you know, vegans and, you know, even like pescatarians, they're going to hold a little bit more weight on their body, but vegan athletes are a little bit different. I, I don't know if you agree with that or not. It's just something that I have seen over the years and something that I've actually been looking into and researching online a lot more now that I've done the carnivore diet and I've made this transition into a plant-based diet. I see. Um, To be honest, uh, now I'm just focused on what you say because, again, it's important. Like, uh, even though it's good food, if you can't digest it, Mm -hmm. it's like the same as you eating junk food or not eating because the body cannot process that. It's just sitting. It's fermenting in your intestine. Trust me, that's what that's what happening, and um, I don't know like if you had like really um, dirty plant based diet or you had like really clean clean plant based diet or uh, I don't know. It's like that's also a big shift if you just did like really clean. You do everything right for the uh, let's say vegan diet. You you don't feel this way. That's what I see. The thing is like, I, I don't eat, I would say my plant-based diet would be dirty as in the abundance of the variety, you know, Mm -hmm. um, may not be there, but as Mm -hmm. in the actual, what the substances are, like, I don't eat crappy food. Like, like I just don't. So like, I know, like I would say my, my dirty version of the vegan diet right now, or a plant-based diet right now Mm -hmm. would be that I'm not buying organic vegetables because most people aren't buying organic vegetables. And I want to try to stay as close to as what the average person Mm -hmm. would do. So I don't want to always do best case scenario, Mm -hmm. but so like, like, you know, again, like, you know, like my standard of day for like the last 10 days, you know, like you're looking at again, you know, mm-hmm. like, like plantain chip, almond butter, milled flax, milled chia seeds, hemp hearts, uh, coconut oil, avocado, um, carrots, cucumbers, roasted pine nut hummus, um, you know, um, coconut flour, sugar-free, you know, little muffins, you know, like, like just like these are all things I normally eat. So like 
that's dirty plant-based meat is only, and I look at as it being dirty plant-based because it just doesn't have maybe the variety that it should, you know, but again, like all of the stuff that I'm eating is actually like quote unquote good quality as in like, it's not like, um, you know, just like junk plant-based food, you know, where like some people might just be eating like a lot of spaghetti, you know, like a lot of like, you know, pastas with like a tomato sauce or something like I don't eat that kind of food ever. Mm -hmm. So like, I wouldn't eat like that now. Um, you know, so again, like my, my dirty version, that would just be that it might be limited. Oh, I see. And then those are satiating feelings from getting those animal products. Of course, number one, when you have this just one steak, you know, even the small, like three to four ounce, mm-hmm. the body, it takes a minimum six hours to just to break down those steak. Mm-hmm. Haven't gone there, the intestine, just in your stomach. Yeah. So it takes time. It's like animal protein is the most difficult heart to break down. The body uses a lot of energy for that. And vice versa, when you go with the carbs, it's like a body takes right away. Mm-hmm. It converts as a glucose right away. So body, the minute you have a carbohydrate, you just spike it, insulin yeah. to up. So that's how you, that's why you cannot stop. You eat a little bit and then you're not satiated. So you need to have more, but already you're full, but you want to go for more. Who's going to have over two cups of a cash show? <laughs> yeah. 10 30 at night <laughs> yeah and these are the things right like where it's like you know because we're converting that you know it, it into glucose you know and you know like i'm looking at like a lot of these things and saying like like this like this is the problem although that i'm eating fats you know which mm-hmm. obviously gonna take a little bit longer for my body to break down predominantly when you're on a plant-based diet mm-hmm. i don't care what any like plant-based vegan people are going to say you're eating a ton of carbohydrates. You cannot get away from that. Like you, you can't, like it is literally impossible to be able to get away from it. So like everybody who wants to sell that eventually you can eat enough protein in your day to maybe for me to get to that 160 to 170 grams. And I'm saying this without taking any protein powders or anything like that, because again, I was not doing that. And I, if we're going to do this, we need the actual data. Can you do this with just food and no supplementation? Right. So to be able to get 160 to 170 grams of protein, like I did the calculations, I am going to be about 350 to 400 grams of carbohydrates. And I'm going to be about 550 to 600 and uh, 550, 600 grams of fat to be able to get my close to 200 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. That that's an absurd amount of food. I know. It's absurd. Like, and so again, it comes back to that. I might be well balanced. I might be a perfect vegan diet, but introducing that amount of food into my body is going to add so much stress for digestion, whether it's easy or not, because you are constantly packing it in. Like when I'm sitting there in every day, there's a going to be about three or four hours out of my day where I'm like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Like you're, you're so uncomfortable. I'm just climbing out of my own skin because like I've got to that point that point so I'm, and i'm like looking at it that i don't have great self control you know but at least the self control that i have doesn't go immediately towards like the donuts or the ice cream or like the chips or anything mm-hmm. along those lines which again like i find for most people that's going to be the bigger battle right you know it's like getting right. away like when i overeat i'm still overeating good quality food which at the end of the day doesn't really matter when we're looking at stress and inflammation Right. However, like there's also going to be a negative aspect that if you're going for like the sour keys and the Twizzlers and mm-hmm. the donuts and ice cream and all that kind of stuff, at least I'm not, I don't have to fight that battle as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I do look at it as just like anything that makes me want to overeat mm-hmm. is not good, no matter what that is. But that's the one thing with the carnivore diet that I found is like, like you never want to overeat, no matter how much meat I ate. I never felt uncomfortable. So like, I actually feel like I know what the difference is now for my stomach to be full mm-hmm. versus like gastrointestinal distress from overeating. Right. You know, like you said, it takes so long for your body to break down meat in the stomach. Mm-hmm. I actually know now, like when my stomach is full of meat, when I would eat like two pounds of beef mm-hmm. and my stomach was full, mm-hmm. you actually don't feel GI distress. But when I ate all the, like the black beans, the rice, the quinoa, the avocados, 
um, you know, like all that kind of stuff last night, I actually felt gastrointestinal distress from that. Like my stomach didn't feel full, uh -huh. but like my, my, my intestines felt distended, like bloated, like my actual just abdominal cavity felt in distress. My skin's being stretched. Like there's the bloating and everything there. Uh -huh. So like, I feel like I know now the difference between those two, uh -huh. but yet I always thought they were one in the same. And I think a lot of people do, but I know now that they're not. No, they're now the two yeah. different thing. And you know, like I'm really curious because you only been 10 days, but with going with the plant-based diet, that there is a certain vitamins and minerals that you're missing it. That's a crucial, the vitamins and minerals that every day you need it. But if you don't have it because you're not even supplementing anything, you're just purely going with the food. So let's say you know already a plant-based diet, you're missing like a, a huge amount of part of vitamin B12. Mm -hmm. And also you know that like iron. Like yeah. you're not having all those like, you know, fish or you're not having all those meats, you know, how are you going to get the iron? You know? Even though you get from the plant-based source, it's inactive form. So the body takes it different way. So that you're going to miss it. And how are you going to actually cope all other stuff? Like what else is missing from your uh, uh, protein? You are not taking that from the plant-based diet. You are missing also a uh, foreign. That's also really important for your stomach, right? The digestive system. So you're missing that one as well. So and vitamin D, you're missing that one. And a huge part of this uh, omega-3. Yeah. yeah, so you can get from like hemp seed, flax seed. You can get from, you know, like a plant-based source. But this is uh, different than we are getting the saturated fat from uh, animal fat, right? Mm -hmm. So those are the actually, we need that. What your body need it mm -hmm. to make a cholesterol. Yeah. So you're missing all those things. So how do you feel? Do you have a, when you compare with the carnivore diet and the plant-based diet right now, your energy level? I actually feel like, you know, like my energy level itself has increased. And I know the reason why. And mm -hmm. I, I know, like I did the same thing when I was talking to Priscilla too, is that molecule that's in coconut oil. I can't remember it, but like, it's the one that crosses the blood brain barrier. I know when I'm consuming coconut oil uh -huh. that my brain is functioning at full capacity. Like I just uh -huh. like, I know that it is. And when my, when my mind is uh -huh. folks or functioning at full capacity, the rest of my body gets carried along with it too, because you're so much more ambitious, uh -huh. which goes to, which is hard for me when I'm on the, this plant-based side, because I wake up in a carbohydrate fog most mornings, uh -huh. which is tough that I never felt when I was on the, the carnivore diet. Right. So like, that's very tough, you know, from an energy standpoint, but I know within the first hour or two, I'll shake it off so I can push through it. Mm -hmm. Um, so like the, like the overall like energy levels and plus with the vitamin D things like that, like I get it, but I'm outside so much now because it's beautiful outside. You're like, it's 20 degrees yesterday. Right. So like I'm out in the sun, I'm probably out in the sun for three, four hours a day for the last couple of weeks. Like consistently, I'm always in the back country. I'm always doing like all these other self care things too, that are going to bump things up. Mm -hmm. The problem that I have is, is that I'm like you, like we know too much. So what my mind also thinks all day long is I think like alpha lipoic acid, or alpha lipoic acid is converted into DHEA, right? Yes. DHEA, yeah. So yes. like in my mind, I'm like, well, if I'm going to have eat these plant-based sources that have this ALA, then my body is convert ALA into DHEA so that my brain can use this DHEA so for proper brain function, or I could just eat fish, or I could just eat salmon roe or something, and I would cut to the chase, you know, because then I get like the DHEA and the DA. So like, like these things are there, they're ready to available for me to be able to consume and I don't have to do this other process. So when you're adding extra processes into your body, there's more distress. There's more inflammation. There has to be because it's like you turn your car on. Well, if you turn your car on and let it idle at a thousand RPM, there's a little bit of distress. But if you sit in your same in the car, park, and you press on the gas pedal and you go up to fifteen hundred RPM, it's doing the same thing, but it's doing more of it. There's more wear and tear. Well, if you press down that gas pedal a little bit more, you still then put it in drive. You're still a park, but you go up to two thousand RPM. You're still performing the same task, but you're adding more stress. You're adding more wear and tear the heat goes up in your engine, the oil breaks down more, you know, like there's just more distress on all these different mechanical components. There's more revolutions per minute. Well, that's the same thing with your body. 
So exactly. it goes back to the thing is, for me, this is the point behind that a plant-based diet or a carnivore diet, neither one of them is good because you're having to do other processes that are easier for your body to accomplish by just cutting to the chase. Should I have to eat black beans, quinoa, rice, and all these things to be able to bump the amino acid profiles up in all of these things? Or could I just eat a couple ounces of steak? Well, it's way better for you because then not only do I become satiated, so I eat less, but then I have these more complete protein strands plus all the other nutritional benefits to it too. So again, like why make your body do more work when you can simply just cut to the chase? You know, like- that, that's a really good point. That's why when I give to my client, you know, I don't really push the plant-based diet. I never push to some other, just one single food diet, you know, category, because it is so important. Like just you say, you know what, you can have like abundance of all those, you know, the variety of vegetable grains, you know, you can have that, you know, plant-based food and then adding small portion of a little bit of, you know, like a animal protein mm-hmm. in there. It's going to have like almost as a complete diet plan you can make it. And that's an easy way to chase after. Because most of the people, they don't know how I'm going to get the long chain, my uh, fatty acid. Because yeah. I cannot get from my uh, actually plant-based food. People, they don't even know what is a long chain fatty acid. But that's, you need that. Because if you want to make a ratio of omega-6 and omega-3 properly, you need to have those omega-3, the proper source from animal and uh, plant-based both. So you have to combine together and make the ratio, right? Usually omega-3 is going to pump up or go up by you just taking some fish, by you taking some, you know, the animal protein, it's going to go up. It's easily. And the plant-based, can I do that? Mm, not really, unless you have to supplement to something else. That's going to be like uh, the green powder, you know, out there, the RG, you can take that. And most of the people, they don't know unless you go see a dietitian or a nutritionist. Yeah. So it's, it's incomplete. So now it's like, uh, now it's so much, it's a trend, a plant-based diet. I don't know, the people, everybody's uh, asking me now, like, oh, can I go to a plant-based diet? Yeah. The first thing I would say, oh, uh, why you want to go there? Yeah. What are the reason? Do you know like what you can digest properly in your system? And what is your background, your genetic? It, yeah. it actually involves, some people actually do very, very well with the plant-based diet. And yeah. some people not. Myself, I cannot go 100%. I know my body. I need some animal product. So I have to combine together. But some people also purely go to like a carnivore diet. They do fantastic doing really well so you need to know your body first and there's no one single diet that like complete all this nutrient and yeah. the end of the day you Blake you know you you really feeding all with those food in your little tiny all the cells you know trillions of cells in your body so you have to give like complete nutrient that in there so you're doing fantastic job and I'm so curious. Okay, please go ahead. No, I was just going to say, because it was something that like, you know, like you allude to the, and, you know, I think like that we both can kind of just say like, you know, a lot of people are doing this because like, obviously the game changers, you know, video came out and you know, like all uh-huh. these different things and stuff like that. Right. You know, and, and like, like the one, when he made the video, like he, like uh, it, it's the misconception that he's saying that a plant-based diet is what you should be on like he's screaming louder than anybody else by saying that I'm not saying that he's actually just saying that you can achieve a, like a healthy diet and a balance of a diet on a plant-based diet. If you do it right. And there's a lot of misinformation out there, but he has vocally said, I'm not saying that everybody should be on a plant-based diet, but everybody's taken that away from that video, which is hard. You know, and the one thing I say, like one of the key components, because I look at the performance based things, like in that video, like we pick it up outside of the other information too. The number one thing that irritated me the most is when they're talking about the vasodilation, you know, like, oh, the, yes, yes. I they're sorry. talking about like, you know, like, well, okay, well, the increased arginine levels, or they, they weren't talking about like the increased arginine levels, like in the plant based products, which are a vasodilator. And we know that nobody's arguing that like, Bodybuilders have been taking arginine as a free form amino acid forever. As long as I can remember. Yeah, and it's yeah. the base of like every pre-workout supplement that offers a pump. There's a ton of arginine in it. Yes. Now, my argument behind that is it's like, yes, we do know that arginine is good as a vasodilator. That's not been a secret. We've known yeah. this since the 70s. That's why people started taking it in the 70s. Yeah. Everybody in the, in the bodybuilding industry has always been taking it. 
Now, my argument behind that being not good for performance it might be good if you want to walk around jacked up with your, you know, <laughs> but you don't want vasodilation necessarily in a performance environment because you're not looking to pack more blood into the muscle because more blood into the muscle actually means you're more inefficient. So then the lactic acid gets stored in there too. What you're looking for is that constant turnover. That's right. Yeah. Now, if you do want vasodilation and you do want more blood to the muscle, again, bodybuilders have always known. I want to pack more blood in there, but I need a really high amount of amino acids in that blood. So when it's packed in that muscle, that muscle has all the resources that it needs to be able to repair. So again, the more selling case that I should have some animal proteins plus a vasodilator, which would be from your plant-based products mm -hmm. to pack all of the macro and micronutrients into that muscle. Maybe that you just finished like destroying in the gym or the muscles that you finish after you're doing like your performance-based product. But again, that's the selling case to me to be more well-rounded, which mm -hmm. theoretically is exactly what James is saying by making that video, not saying that people should now globally, everybody should be on a plant-based diet. Oh, that's uh, how the people have to look at it. But the thing is that like, he's uh, giving his opinion, mm -hmm. but it's like, how are you going to take that? And how are you going to actually plan for your meal plan and go for it? Because you really have to understand your body. You understand your body, even despite you understood your body in previously, after we switched it to carnivore diet, and that was in 30 days. Mm -hmm. And then you just uh, changed it to plant-based diet. So now you're introducing exactly the same for you used to eat, you used to enjoy, you used to digest really well those food, you reintroduce it, what happened? You're struggling right now. So body is constantly adjusting and changing. Mm -hmm. So you really have to tune for your body. And then you have a problem right now, like, okay, I'm bloated. I don't feel good. And then you really have to think or go back. Oh, what did I have yesterday until up to now? What food I have? And then you, you know yourself, oh, okay, maybe you know what? I'm going to eliminate the beans and see how yeah. I feel. Because when the symptom is only one thing, your body tells you i cannot digest this do something about it yeah yeah so yeah. that's what you have to do right so that's important at the end of the day yes now we talk about all this nutrient and stuff like that but at the end of the day you really have to know what works for your body mm -hmm. if you cannot metabolize even though all those good source of food it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's not going to work for you yeah so that's the thing so either go to plant-based or kind of a diet or even paleo diet whatever you want to go you really have to try and you have to focus, you know, you have to really uh, pay attention how your body is telling you. That is really important. That's why like, you can be a best nutritionist for your body. That's See, what I see. Yeah, it's listening to things. So, and, and again, like, like you said, like, you know, being a nutritionist for your body is making sure that like you are aware of everything that's happening. See, and like the interesting part behind this is something that the, the opinion that I've formed in the last 40 days when it comes to nutrition, when I look back, and like this is completely anecdotal, I, I realize this, but when I look at how I feel, because mm -hmm. I do not know a lot of people who have done what I'm doing, I wish I could find some other people who have, and you know, maybe have done all these diets that I'm doing, like, you know, in the same order, or roughly the same order, maybe like for like maybe 60 days instead of 30 days. But the, the theory that I've come up with is that when we look at seasonal eating versus all these different diets, is that like, if you started in like early spring, mm -hmm. like in early spring was like your carnivore diet mixed with like your, your berries, um, like your fresh, you know, kind of like things that would come out um, like in the springtime, mm -hmm. but it was carnivore diet. And it was for simplicity's sake, let's just use a 50, 50 percent, 50 percent carnivore diet, 50 percent of like, you know, fresh local berries and like little like grubs and shrubs, like all these different little things are starting to grow in the mm -hmm. springtime. You know, then what we transition into is eliminating pretty much all of the carnivore diet and going into like these like, you know, berries and these grubs and these shrubs and like all this kind of stuff and looking at more of our things that might be like starting to get like root based or flower based or like anything mm -hmm. along those lines the stuff that would grow during the summertime you know and starting into like the early fall you know and then we transition in, the, in like the fall time to like predominantly like root based vegetables and you know like late seasonal fall things like apples and all that kind of stuff 
and the start of our carnivore diet. And then by the time that winter comes around is then that's when I think that we would predominantly be almost fully on a carnivore diet. So like summertime, we would be predominantly on a plant-based diet. Winter time, we'd be predominantly on a carnivore diet. And spring and fall are the transitions between those two. Because in the summertime, like you are burning through more carbohydrates, but those carbohydrates are more readily available to you. There's more of like an abundance just to be able to pick and nibble because you're out and about, you're out in like, you know, and I'm talking like thousands of years ago, not like in today's society where like, right. you know, you'd w- be walking down and you'd see berries and you'd pick them off. You'd see these things on the ground and you would eat them and like, you would just see stuff around it and you would nibble. So you'd have a chance to be able to scavenge eat. Like, you know, like mm. you'd be out there, you know, kind of just like forage and continually all day long. But mm-hmm. in the winter time, you don't have that availability. Mm-hmm. But what happens is when you eat the, the meats, you become so satiated where you can eat meat, you know, and almost go an entire day without eating. And you don't have to go find the sources and the meat. If you kill something, you could just leave it outside because it would be cold enough outside. It would preserve it by just simply leaving outside or digging in the snow and burying it in the snow or anything along those lines. And you kind of have your natural refrigerator. So like I see now how in a calendar year between our spring, summer, fall, and winter, how seasonal eating and what it actually really means based on how my body feels. Because like in the winter time, I wouldn't want to be on a plant-based diet where you're never satiated and you needed an abundance amount of food when that abundance amount of food isn't available to you. I would want to be on a carnivore diet where I'm chronically satiated and I can kill a big animal and go long durations of time without having to kill another animal, whether that be a week or two weeks or a month, depending on how big your animal is and how many people you're feeding. But you can go longer durations of time without having to forage for your food. But in the summertime, like you have that option, that availability, because you can theoretically almost eat anything out in nature. We just choose not to do that now, you know, but you have the abundance. You can be chronically refueling. So like, I really see like the, how the seasonal eating actually comes into play based on like how our bodies actually feel from like, like our genes and our processes and like how our mind interprets food. Um, I don't know if you'd agree with that or not. Just, I do it, agree with you. It, seasonal eating is really makes sense because uh, we are, we are one of the just uh, live things, right? It's mm-hmm. just like plants and animals, anything, right? It's we work with harmony and system. It has to be balanced. Everything work with the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. So there's a reason that, you know, why the winter time and the summer time is all different vary of food and so on. And if we just follow the, what the nature is offering, then we can actually balance our body as well. And then we can feel great. But the thing is, right now is in 2020. 2020 is not like 1950 or 1920. So it's completely different. Food is available and everywhere in any season. Like, uh, well, you, you don't have a hard time to find the food that, you know, you, you can, it cannot grow in the winter time. Yeah. It's there. It's available. And second, you and I or people out there... Um, you know, I don't want to really separate, you know, just the people, you know, they're not really tuned for, you know, their nutrition or in exercise and lifestyle, so on. They have a different priority and interest in as well. But to tell you this, uh, plant-based diet can work for most of people. It's good. When you really take the blood and then you exam, you're going to see it. The main thing is that any diet that when you actually take away all those sugar, all those chemical. And just purely from the whole food, when you take it, you take all the advantage and then you feel great. But you are the person that you already felt great before. Mm-hmm. And then now you go going to one diet to another. So you can really understand what works for you, what not. But the regular people, number one is like, uh, I wanted to tell them, don't even worry about what diet you have to go on. Just eliminate all the sugar, eliminate all this processed food, then you're going to be already feel great. Yeah. And from there, you're going to actually go micro plan and go detail. You know what? You, okay, this is, a, you know, I perform better when I actually add this food. Oh, this food, when I eat this one, I don't feel good. I get bloated. I feel nauseous or I'm tired. 
and all those things you really have to pay attention aware of it that's that's why it's, and i really agree with what you say but this is not going to really uh work in the, this day yeah it is out there and, and i and i agree with you and, and i'm glad you brought it up because i actually forgot to say it when i was talking it's something that the disclaimer that like i continually try to reinforce you know, when, especially talking about these things, nutrition related is that I'm, I'm not talking about any of these things from like an average day-to-day -day life. I'm talking about them from an extreme performance perspective. So like, like the, like the information that I, I'm saying to most people, like it, it is far too down the rabbit hole. Like we, you can, like for most people, they can be miles high above where I am, you know, but I'm talking like, I want to be able to sleep five hours a night and feel great. Like I want to be able to play squash for 45 minutes. I want to lift weights for an hour. I want to run 5k I want, on the weekend. I want to do 60 K in the back country. I want to summit two mountains, you know, like, like this is my life and that's what I need. And this is what all the, I compare all these nutritional experiments to, mm -hmm. and I am very aware of my, my body. And like you said, I do agree, no matter what diet anybody's going to do, if they simply just eliminated the shit that everybody eats in today's world, like that, that alone, like you wouldn't need to do anything over and above that. Even if you just, if you stopped that, like the McDonald's, the KFC, the, you know, the McCain's pizzas that you make in the, the oven at home, you know, like, like all of this different kind of crap, like the ice creams, the chocolate bars, the chips, the pop. If we just eliminated that, who cares? Stop there. Like exactly. if that's all you did was if we just as a society said this stuff is socially irresponsible to eat because it legitimately is killing people. We spend billions of dollars in tax revenue trying to like combat the symptoms and like the ailments of these foods. If we just agreed to stop that. I don't care whether you're ketogenic, plant-based, carnivore, paleo, anything, because you've already won. Mm -hmm. And because you've already won, we have all already won as a society, hands down, 100%. Absolutely. It's like, a, that's number one basic. That's like a base camp, number one. And then after that, you can actually go deeper. Okay, so what works for my body? This, is a, this food is good for my body type. That's what you have to go on for. And you doing amazing work for many people out there because you already know your body and your lifestyle is great. And you just want to show to people that this is uh, going to happen when you eat this way. So you're actually educating people. That's unbelievable when I see that. And I, if you ask me to do that, I won't do it. Yeah. because <laughs> well, like, the thing is like where you say like like it is tough and, it, and it's tough for me and i look at like i was sitting in the ice bath the other day and like granted the water was quite warm it was it was like three degrees so like like it's cold don't get me wrong like it's, it's, it's not warm but like we typically like it around like minus one right but the right. one thing i was looking at there is like i'm doing sitting in the ice bath you know especially like right now because it's like it's going to increase my white blood cell count which is going to abuse uh, you know increase my immune system mm -hmm. my immune system like um i get the cold shock protein release but i'm also going to get the norepinephrine now mm -hmm. for me to be able to sit in that ice bath long enough like i did about seven minutes seven minutes and 15 seconds i could have pushed it a little bit longer than that but um i kind of got distracted and then hopped out mm -hmm. um and um but if i didn't have the emotional strength that I have right now, switching onto this plant-based diet and like mm -hmm. the cognitive strength. Mm -hmm. If I was on the carnivore diet, I don't know if I would have been able to survive that. Like, because ah. is, I know that I wasn't as mentally and emotionally strong, which again, then I also then see, but this is the things that I want to do in these environments of challenging myself and getting the, then like the benefit of all these things and like the, from like a genetic standpoint of like mm -hmm. the benefit of all these like crazy things that like mm -hmm. crazy quote unquote things that like I do mm -hmm. based on like performance and um, inflammation reduction I see how I need them and they become valuable tools but again I might be pushing the most extreme environments that but that's no different than road rage driving to work you, mm -hmm. you manage that stress can you manage the stress of having like a new baby at home or opening a new business or a deadline at work those are all the same things as sitting in the ice bath. We just want to think that they're different, but they're not like our mind and our body doesn't perceive them to be any different. So again, like I can see like, well, why can some people deal with more stress than others? And I see how diet is definitely like a key, not that I didn't know this before, but I'm, I'm starting to see 
how advantageous it is and these little things that we can add into our diet to make us feel so much better. But I can also see when those things are taken away, how detrimental it is. Cause like I said, like holding a static wall squat, I didn't even get over two minutes, you know, after the, at the end of the carnivore diet, but on my regular diet, I was like four minutes and 40 seconds. What's well, huge. Like that, there's a huge difference, like an inch is a mile at that point in time. Right. You know, so like I, I see like, and again, being mentally and emotionally strong, like that's the backbone of performance in every category, athletic or in everyday life. I think that's for everyone. The mindset is really important. It's the, because now you have a mission and you really are, have accountability, right? So then like you have to do it someday. I'm sure you're human too. You don't feel like you do it. You want to go just grab like, oh, here's my you know, oyster. You want to do that, but you can't, right? Yeah. So here's the thing. People, when they decide to do something, okay, I have my goal and they want to do that. And, you know, beginning they have uh, those motivation. They want to go for it. But the thing is, um, motivation uh, doesn't last really long. No. So you really have to have that mindset you're going to go for it. Because now is a perfect time. I give you one example. I called uh, my client just ask how you're doing. And, you know, I want to see the, the oh, no, now it's the guy I can't do this. And then she has all kinds of feeling. So I ask her, maybe you should grab this food and do it. Maybe, you know, you eliminate that one. The first, her answer was this, you know, what? Uh, there's not much food available out there. This is like a pandemic. It's so tough. So now for now, I'm just going to do this way. And then when I realized that, you know what, I would be the same thing. Human brain, we can give any kind of excuses if you don't feel like to do it. Yeah. And this is perfect excuses. You can do that. But when I go to buy my food, I go every day. I line up outside. I just, all those restrictions, I respect it. I do it. Mm -hmm. The fruits and vegetables, all those, you know, like uh, uh, grass-fed beef and those section, you know, the whole food section is like, uh, it's available. Yeah. The food is just sitting there. And then when I go to the other side, there's nothing available. All those canned food and those junk food, it's not available. It's a shelf. It's half is empty. Yeah. So what this means the people just take advantage right now. Oh, okay, you know what? Now is a pandemic, so I can do whatever I want. This Absolutely. is the situation is not available, so I'm just going to have this. And the more you get stressed, the more you stay home, you don't move your body, and you let yourself go, and your mind lets you eating in front of a computer or TV. Yeah. You want to have more sugar. You want to have more chips. Yeah. You want to have more junk food. You have more, you eat more, and you want more. That's yeah. how it works. So is it come down to it's a mindset. I don't want to tell people like you have to, you know, do this, do that. But, you know, at least to think again, when you really want to go on to any diet, the behind the reason why you want to do this, why you want to go for that diet. If it's just for superficial, oh, okay, I want to lose 30 pounds. I just want to look good. Then you know what? Like uh, it meant not going to last long. You need yeah. to have a more deeper level of a meaning of a purpose to go for it. That's what I see. So you're doing fantastic. And the end of the day, it's a mindset. And then you really have to understand, you know, and then most important, get rid of all this junk food yeah. and sugar. And then you're going to see that what works for you one by one. So tell me more about how, what's your, your next plan? You told me before a little bit, next to 10 days, how are you going to do it? Yeah, the next thing is like, I just want to kind of start like adding a little bit more variety, like, like researching a little bit more like recipes, you know, like my oldest daughter and I like, you know, like we sat last night and like we said, okay, well, like what, what is this going to be? Because again, like she committed 15 days to this plant based diet, you know, uh, too. So she, she's gonna be done in the next like, you know, five days and stuff. But like, I just want to look at like more like recipes and stuff like that, because then it forces you to think like outside of the box. But right, like, and again, like, because I've always ate predominantly plant-based anyway. It's just kind of going more back into my archives, you know, of like, you know, doing the things like, well, like spaghetti squash with like a really good tomato sauce with some fresh basil and garlic and onions, you know, just taking the ground beef or like the turkey out of it or like the, you know, like the goat cheese, like having just kind of having it like, like just having like those kind of options. But like my big thing now is just kind of like increasing the variety you know, because mm -hmm. that was always my goal with the carnivore diet too, is, you know, always making sure that I have the increased variety so that I can't 
allow anybody else to have an excuse or myself to have an excuse to saying like, oh, well, you could have done better. You could have added this, <laughs> could have had that. Because it's like, at the end of the day, if I'm going to do it, I might as well experiment. Because if I'm going to go to the grocery store and buy food anyway, well, what's right. the difference if I buy like the zucchini instead of the pear or instead of like the water chestnuts or like, you know, like I have the opportunity to be able to get all that variety. It would just be like the pandemic excuse all over again for somebody else of not doing that. So like I can actually, you know, do that. And that is my goal for the next 20 days is making sure that like, like, like everything, like I want to be able to walk into a grocery store and walk down the produce section uh-huh. and say, I've tried everything in there. Like all the different kinds of hot peppers, all the different kinds of mushrooms, all the different kinds of leafy greens, all the different kinds of root vegetables. Like I want to legitimately walk through the produce section of a grocery store and say, I have tried every single thing in this entire section um, at least once during this next 20 days. Oh, that's going to be amazing. You're going to bring so much data for people that this is what I've done. And then some people might going to agree with you. Oh, I did that too. Oh, yeah. So I shouldn't do that. So they can actually learn from you, your experience. That's really good. And I like to uh, talk to you next week, uh, follow up again. So if you are okay with it. For sure. So, okay. Would you like to do Thursday or Friday? uh either or like i said like friday might friday around this time would probably be um good then what i'll do is i'll actually send you uh an invite when we're done this conversation right now so it actually goes in my calendar but if friday um at 11 works for you we can schedule in friday at 11 uh next week and we can plug it in that'd be good i want to just continue to go this one the regularly so we understand better and then we can actually uh provide more uh, information for people yeah. out, out there let's Sounds do that great. Okay, so don't disappear. <laughs> yeah. Happy Good Friday. Oh, yeah, it's an Easter this Sunday. Yeah. What's your plan for Easter? Uh, well, the Easter bunny is coming uh, to our house on Saturday night to lay some Easter eggs and stuff. Um, and oh, wow. We're, we're coloring our, our pictures, so we got, like, our little uh, our coloring <gasps> Oh my god, that's so cute. Oh yeah. beautiful. Happy. So this is uh yeah, this is the one that I'm working on for my uh for my middle daughter right now. And uh-huh. a coloring contest with my oldest daughter. Mm-hmm. Um and uh yeah, just like little Easter things like that. And then again, like we're probably gonna go for um a little bit of a drive, um, you know, like for like a day or two up through the, the Fraser Canyon, you know, up through Lillooet, down through Pemberton, just to kind of get out of the house. Cause it's so nice, right? Like it's gonna be twenty degrees all weekend and you know, just mm-hmm. kind of like spend some time because there's there's nobody through the Fraser Canyon, you know, on the best of days anyway. So I can imagine that it's the best way to social distance right now because you're in the middle of nowhere and you're just kind of relaxing and just enjoying some time away from everything on a long weekend. Um, because if we can't all get together with our families, you know, during Easter, whether or not you're Christian or Catholic or not, um, then we might as well spend the time doing something with, with that we enjoy with people that we love. So. Oh, that sounds amazing because, you know, while we are doing the social distancing, it doesn't mean you have to stay in all the time. Yeah. This time, you can really use it to go out. It's beautiful outside to get some sun. Like you say, you know, you can get the vitamin D just by soaking the sun. That's yeah. really important that so you actually boost your mood as well. And it's actually to help you to boost your immune system as well. So it's just excellent. And, so, you know, and I beg people like this, it's like, respect the restrictions yes but again like you said like we we need to be outside like we can't lock ourselves in our house like you need fresh air you need to see people you need to see the sun like you need all these things like you can respect the the rules and the social regulations that are out right now but you can still absolutely walk out your door you know like i said like like i if you choose to stay inside, it's one thing, but we, we need self-care because we can't come out of this, this pandemic in mm-hmm. worse shape than what we went in. And if people you know, are going to continue to eat crappy food, lock themselves in their house and just watch Netflix for 12 hours a day, we actually will come out of this pandemic in worse shape than what we went in. So I hope that people just take this time out to really focus on self-care and you know, realize the things that we should all be doing and still exercise the mind exercise the body put the phone down read a book you know do some meditation if you need still exercise even if it might not look the same you know go outside it's springtime it's blue sky it's 20 degrees 
feel the warmth of the sun on your skin, close your eyes, get your eyeballs looking up at the sun, get that vitamin D in. And, you know, even if you just hear other people or if you're sitting at your driveway, like that's one thing I see in my neighborhood all the time is people just have lawn chairs in their driveway and you walk down the street and you see yeah. all people sitting in, in lawn chairs. So they're outside, they're not mingling, you know, but neighbors can still talk to each other in big open green fields, you know, there'll be, you know, like a couple of people in the lawn chair here, then 50 feet away, there'll be another couple of people in the lawn chair and they're mm -hmm. untanning and listening to music and, you know, like they're abiding by the social regulations, but they're still self care so that they come out stronger and better um, than when we went into this. And I think that is absolutely important. Oh, that's amazing message you're just sending out there. And then some people that they have kind of have a jump full, they cannot really get out there. Then at least to do like this, like you and me, is yeah. to truly connect with the sum on the video chat, right? So yes. that's really important that by doing so, you can actually produce that hormone called the oxytocin. That's a love hormone. We need that for your mental health and even your physical health. So that's really important. Mita, I'm going to get out, you know, after this chat with you. I'm yep. going to get some sun for at least one hour to get, you know, I can't okay. wait. So awesome. thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Happy Good Friday. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, when you get outside in that nice sun sunny weather, uh, throw, me, throw me a selfie so I, I got proof that you made it outside and you're soaking in that vitamin D. Will do. Be awesome. safe. Okay. okay. Have a great day. You too. Bye.